Hi, today we're going to look at the Amazon AWS Cloud and more specifically how to upgrade from an existing instance to uh, a higher configuration. Now, the reason that we want to do this is obviously we can't always predict how much hardware or processing power we'll need and as a result we can often fall short of uh, what probably is the expected uh, requirement. And that's something that's happened to me today, so that's essentially why I'm going to create this video to show you how to upgrade your existing infrastructure in uh, AWS. Now, before we do that, I think probably it's a good idea to explain what AWS is about. And uh, very simply, if you put uh, it in terms of uh, very layman terms, AWS or Amazon Web Services is a way that Amazon has exposed virtualized hardware to the consumer market. And the idea being that Previously, till a few years back, if a company wanted to host or launch a product or do any real kind of information technology work, they had to have a data center with servers of their own, they had to purchase licenses, they probably needed a DBA, a network engineer, a storage engineer, uh, a system administrator to go ahead and configure uh, uh, the entire infrastructure so that they can launch their application. Now, often, this involves a very significant uh, initial operating expense as well as capital expense in terms of just buying hardware and licenses and hiring people to do this. And uh, obviously, there are other requirements like uh, air conditioning and power, etc. So it's always been a challenge to get the required infrastructure set up in the time frames that you need. And as a result, people have been more inclined towards virtualization and consolidation over the last few years. Amazon AWS in the cloud is just the next logical step where independent vendors are providing you the hardware infrastructure and exposing different APIs or web services through which you can control that infrastructure remotely. The idea be here being that with an AWS or Windows Azure account, what you're essentially doing is you're buying an account and you're paying for hardware as you use it. So for people who have fluctuating demands uh, a typical example would be you've got a seasonal variation in your consumer demand, at which point during that particular time of the year when your customer volumes are high, you probably need additional hardware to scale or load balance the increased uh, traffic to your site. And for the rest of the year, you don't need that kind of hardware or processing power. So you can actually provision hardware on an as-need basis using the cloud services that Amazon as well as Windows Azure provides. So. In my case, today what I'm going to do is I've already got an e EC2 instance running here. Let me just go ahead and show you that. So this is my uh, current production environment that I have here, and this is the upgrade test environment. It's always a good idea to implement a test bed and try out your approach on the test bed first before you implement it directly on your instance. So I'm going to go ahead and do it on my test instance, and then obviously we have a lot of checks and balances that need to go in for the, uh, the production instance. So I'm going to leave this untouched for the moment. As you can see here, I've got a micro instance of uh, AWS, which is pretty much the lowest configuration you can get right now. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and upgrade this to a higher configuration, probably um, two gigabytes or four gigabytes of uh, RAM. Now. The reason I'm going to upgrade this is because you really have two choices. For example, in my production environment right now, I've got a database as well as uh, a web server, and uh, it's reached its limit. So I have a choice of provisioning an additional micro instance like this one, and then simply moving my database or web server into the other instance, in which case I'm pretty much just getting two pieces of hardware, deploying it in a two-tier architecture, one with the web server and one with the uh, database. But I don't really see the need for that right now. And cost-wise, I think it's simpler for me to just go ahead and upgrade to um, a 2 gigabyte instance to kind of maintain the performance that I need for my site. So I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the um, T1 micro instance that we have here. Now, there are two different things that you need to keep in mind when you're upgrading the micro instance here. For example, when you go ahead and create or launch the instance, you have volumes created for your site. Right, so if you click here, for example, on the volume side, you'll see that I've got uh, a root volume for the test server. I've got a root volume for the web server, which is my production environment, and a data volume for the uh, production environment as well. I'm going to provision one more uh, data volume for the test server so that it looks identical to my production environment. So I'll say create volume. I'll say it's a standard volume because this is again just a test bed. I don't need 100 gigabytes. I'm just going to stick with 30 for the moment. The availability zone, I'm just going to leave it in uh, 
here <coughs> right now snapshot I don't want to go ahead and create anything at the moment so I'll just leave it a snapshot ID is basically it creates a copy of an existing drive or volume in this case I'm going to leave it as it is and I'm just going to say create so there we go I've got a new volume provisioned again this volume is provisioned but it's not mapped or associated with my test bed so let me just go ahead and attach the volume and uh, when I attach it you can see that I've got my upgrade test environment listed here as 2732 which is what I have here so I'm just gonna select that and I'm gonna say attach great so at this point I've attached the volume and that's good takes a minute to go ahead and do that in the meantime let me try and connect to my uh, test environment uh, so let me just go ahead and say get the Windows password okay so I've got the Windows password for my system so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, log in to this machine right now So you can see here I've got this connect, so I'm just going to go ahead and click connect. You can see it's got the get password and rem download remote RDP file. So my remote RDP file is downloaded. I'm going to click it, press connect, enter the password, press yes. And if I come to my computer here, you'll see that this one just has about 614 gigabytes of RAM. It's not much. Yeah. So now that my volume is attached, you can see that I have a challenge here, which is that the volume does not reflect in the my computer of um, the system. So let me go ahead and have a look at that. Let's see what that's about. So under storage, under disk management, you can see that I must initialize logical disk one before the disk manager can ex access it. Essentially what this means is that this particular uh, disk that I've just attached is not recognized. You can see that when, it, when you look here, the disk 0 is the root drive which comes automatically with AWS, whereas disk 1 is unknown. So I'm going to go ahead and just say it's a master boot record, and I'm going to go ahead and just uh, allocate it. All right. Yeah. There we go. Right, so let me just refresh. I'm going to say new simple volume, press next. I'm going to allocate uh, the entire size of the disk as it is, and I'm going to call it a D drive. Uh, you can see that uh, you've got an empty NTFS folder that you can allocate, but I want to al allocate the entire drive. I'm going to say format the volume to NTFS, which is obviously the best choice for uh, server hardware. Okay. Press finish, and there we go. So now you can see I've got my additional disk here with uh, the volume D. Right, and uh, let me just refresh. So in order for this to take effect now, I need to go ahead and restart the uh, the system. So just uh, you can see that it's done formatting. You can see that the drive name and NTFS, all the other details that I need are listed here. And you can see that I've got a new uh, free volume, right? It's all empty and uh, there's really not much going on here right now.